There's actually nothing by Keith's on the right-hand side. There isn't any sound by his, so that must be something from his end, I think. Well, it might be to... No, he's not got no mute sign on, has he? No. That means that the sound is off. No. But the, so the other one is that the, they're live, the grey one, um, by Keith's. Oh, there is now. There. Can you hear us now, mm. please? No. Yes, John. Mm. Don't know. The last that's like they got, they got the rest. Yeah, that was Keith, um, was Keith, uh, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Keep on going. Ah, now I lost. Mm. <laughs> I still did, huh? Easy. Oh, Andy, where are you? That's it. Yeah. Did you win? Win, win, win. Yeah. Win. Yeah. I forget his name. I keep calling him Mark. I think Mark was the security manager there, I think. Oh, well. He was, Sharon. He was. All right. Yeah. John, the car not stopped. Hello, everyone. Hello, Franklin. Thank you. Hi. 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 On Wednesday the 16th. Can you the sound quite a bit? I'll shout. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Thank well done, Fab. Are you recording here? No. Okay, we're not recording here. Um, submissions from the public. Do we have any members of the public? No. 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 So no submissions from the public. Um, uh, received any apologies for absence? We have well I know Elaine apparently sent a message through to say that she wants to be in tonight. Uh, apologies from Ed Rose. And the representative from Baby Valley. Oh. And I think that was that the true. Rachel's iPad was just joined. It might actually be Rachel. And I know John. John is intending to join through Zoom. Yes, sir. He's here. Oh, he's here, is he? Oh, sorry, I didn't see. <laughs> yeah, he's there, definitely there. Um, so, was that Rachel as in? Not Rachel? I think it might be. 
Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to hear from you, Linda, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Rachel. Hello. I didn't think anyone could know that I was there, actually. Uh, 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 you just speak it like that. We can't see it. We're right there, but we can hear you. Yeah, yeah you can well, hear I'm, that. I'm also right. picking tea, so there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so we'll move on. Item number four, any declarations by members under the local government? Right. Very dispensations. Okay, applications for any dispensations, you're quite right. Any dispensations by councillors? No. Okay, so any declaration by members under the local government then? 72. No. Uh, announcements from the chair. The only thing which I've done since the last meeting was very happily opened the happy stone drill, which is at the Willowbrook Centre. And I've got to thank the uh, Bos Friends of Bosnum School for organising the kids to do it. And I also have a great thanks to the Willowbrook Centre and the manager, Andy, for being able to um, mount it and pay for it at the Woodbrook Centre, which is just if you if you are outside the, well, by the bus stop on uh, the main road and you're at the giant end shop, the bicycle shop, it's just inside the car park in a glass area, and that will go down in history. And we hope that the kids will. And they got round me to say that's my stone. But it's a great thanks for um, all involved in that, and I just don't get on Saturdays in the fish boat. So we'll move on um, to confirm the minutes, item number six of the meeting held on the 27th of July. There is one correction to be made, please. So it is on the Saturday the 27th of July, the meeting is on the 27th of July. Yeah, bills. Yeah, bills and direct credits. So it's the very first, the top bit is July pensions reads 5480.11 and it should be 5597.19, which then changes the total from 3275.91 to 3284.29. Is that amendment? I'll do a comment. comment. Uh, up to number six, the parents are all going to join the meeting at this point. That's a bit brusque, and then it was due to technical difficulties. So it's not because not I was laughing. Can you put due to technical difficulties up there? I can do what I can do. Yeah. Yeah. Let me try because it's not really late. <laughs> Sorry, I had a bad work when you leave. It's just. Those two amendments, um, are we happy to approve for this minute? Uh, those in favour, like to show of hands. One, two, three, four, five. I'm in favour. So that's unanimous. Thank you very much. Sorry, do we have a proposal and a seconder for that? I propose. Thank you, Tom. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
and by increasing the budget for this project to about 105k would be in the long run a best spend. At full council in July it was agreed and unanimously that this project should be completed within the 2020-2021 financial year. A suggested figure of up to 105% on this project could be allowed or allocated, sorry. In March, contact was made with various funding providers and at this point, the Town Council was not eligible for any support. However, since lockdown, well, I've revisited some contacts and discovered that the Town Council might meet the criteria for up to £50,000 towards this project. Um, the various uh, criteria to meet is to complete the project within six months. The trust requires 10% independent third-party funding e.g. for a grant of 20k it's required that a third party will be willing to contribute £2,000 to the company to reimburse its tax credit. Okay, um, the completed application form and supporting documents must be submitted to them by the 11th of December this year for their meeting in January for a decision. The next stage of the process would be compiling the specification and the proposed work to submit to the Government contract final website and designs that come in as a result can be presented to the council. Areas the council can reduce costs will be safety surface area colours. Brightly coloured surfaces could increase the overall cost by up to £4,000 on this development. The council can specify all safety areas to be black, however, sometimes colour increases play value and can be considered as inclusive. Galvanised dipped over powder coated is more robust surface. Over time, powder coated parts back exposing bare metal and the risk of rust and scratch surfaces is increased and you can't actually restore these surfaces. Accessibility and inclusive equipment pieces, uh, uh, sorry, these pieces of equipment are extremely important. Play equipment has developed a great deal over the last 26 years and inclusive pieces will reach out and include a larger, more diverse group by encouraging healthy play and social interaction. And on the actual report, I've listed what's currently within the play area and have put a suggested replacement play area with items to be included, which is some of the things that you have mentioned over the last meeting to include um, a possible wheelchair platform swing and a wheelchair accessible roundabout. Um, and there are a couple of little pictures there and diagrams of the equipment that we've had quoted on um, of the, without inclusive pieces. And I have put an offer of recommendation to agree to a budget of a, a oh, I'll put the piece, 105k to draft up contract tender documentation with the listed equipment to meet the criteria of this funding provider. we can grab as much as we can um, but it either 
a bit of a vicious circle when you're in this situation with a big um, project like this. It's something that you need to set a budget, put it in. I mean, you can put a, put the budget on the contract finder and you could get nobody come in because they can't provide what we're asking within that specification. Um, to be able to apply for the actual grant funding through Enervert, we need to have, we need to be ready to go ahead, do we? You can't just yeah. say, we'd like this money. Yeah, we have to be in a position to um, have our budget, as in what we're prepared to spend and possibly with allowing for the amount that they're going to provide and be good to go within six months. So we need a finished proposal to put forward, basically. Yeah. yeah. So we've got to propose the maximum budget that we feel comfortable with. Yeah. That we may or may not get additional funding from this company. That's yeah. it. Yeah. 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 And the amount that I have actually um, added to the seventy-five thousand is really based on the equipment that people have or councillors have specified. I know that um, Brian mentioned that we get a wheelchair friendly swing, so it's a case of including possibly two pieces that would include wheelchair accessible equipment within that play area. Um, obviously, if you reduce the budget, then there'll be less equipment, which is absolutely fine, but it's giving you as much information to make that decision. I know the science of that. If, if we have a wheelchair swing, do we have access to the swing for wheelchairs? No, no but do you can't get access to it. The, the area is wheelchair accessible. That's fine. Yeah, perfect. That's a good question. So that you need to give, yeah, so you need to give the, the, the go ahead that you're willing to spend up to 105,000 if that's what you want to do, and then obviously they can take it from that. Yeah. No, you tell them what you want. Well, when, like, when you put it on the contract finder, I think you have to put the maximum budget in and see what equipment you can get for that price. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 We have to propose that we would like to um, go go ahead and get the quotes for this. Yeah. I'd be happy if I may. Yeah. Um, if you put a figure in of uh, X scores of pounds, I suggested tender, and it comes back and they said. Well, Excuse me, I've been putting my hand up the last five minutes to speak. Sorry, John. We have. We, We'll, we'll come back. We'll come to you. Just a sec, John. We, we haven't seen your hand up, but we will come back to you. It, What's the point of having a hand up, Fish? You're not looking at it. It's not on the screen. Will we be doing this? If my is it now? Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tom just we will come to you, but just a second, Michael could finish your Sorry, uh, we put a figure in um, with a view to it, but if they come back and say, we can do this, but if we get an extra 5,000, we can do that as well, are we able to resubmit? Yes, we can, and also if they come back in under price, then obviously it's going to be in your favour. So we can then seek for something else? Yes, of course. Excellent, thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, John. John, go ahead. Thanks, Phil. Um, well, I, I can't believe we're talking about spending 100 grand when we don't know what our income's going to be next year, irrespective of the grants we get. And I propose this is deferred till after uh, the full council meeting, after December, when we know what our income is going to be. That's like any family household who is run properly, you budget for what you do. You can't say, well, we might get maybe done next year, but we're still going to buy this and buy that. You've got to wait to see what your money is. So this should be deferred to next year. Yeah. John, I can understand 100% where you're coming from, but we've already got 75 out budget. Yeah, but um, we are supposed to be conservatives, aren't we, Tony? Yeah, yeah, I agree. If I could just finish. The, 
we've, at the same time, um, we've worked out a figure of that we've, the pandemic so far has cost the council about 20,000. It's not, actually, it's less than that now, because less. we've got that small grant. Yeah, yeah, hang on, I was going to come yes, to that. Sorry. Yeah, the actual overall figure was, was that we have suffered a loss of about 20,000. Rachel is what is coming today on an email is apparently uh, has got in the region of six and six and a half thousand. It was me, actually. Oh, sorry, I'm joking about that. <laughs> Whoa. It's just, I saw an email and it was... Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm very sorry. So, so our um, finance young lady has um, secured uh, six and a half thousand. So we're only in a deficit of about 13 and a half at this moment in time. I agree to, with you, John, that we should possibly wait to December, but there's no harm, I feel, in getting quotes. We're not making a decision at this point, we're just getting quotes. Mm. And if we leave it in... What I've heard is like we're making a decision tonight. No, I, the proposal is that we go ahead and get quotes. That's what the proposal will be. It's not a question of, of it is a firm project as yet. That, that will be determined at the December meeting. Yeah. Can I just say something? Well, I can, item 72.2 doesn't say get quotes, it's saying design and install a new play area. It doesn't say get quotes to do it. Yeah, well, we haven't actually had the proposal yet, John. And the proposal will be to continue with getting quotes, not necessarily go ahead with the work. We, we need to watch how much money we're spending. We really do. And next year, if we've got all, all the money we want coming in from the, the council tax, then fair enough, let's spend it. But until we know what we're getting, let's just calm down, for goodness sake, and act like conservatives. Well, that, that's what we're doing. We're just, if, we, if we don't, at the moment in time, that, that particular player has been up for 27 years or something like that, and it's in... Sadly, dis disrepair. We've been up for 27 years, another year won't hurt them, will it? <laughs> and it's in my ward as well. It, 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 it might if somebody has an accident because it's, you know, faulty equipment. But, uh, no, they won't. Yeah, but John, we'll just look they at it. Expect it, it any faulty equipment is the MOOC, so that's a weak argument, health and safety. Well, it may be, but it, we're only at this moment in time looking at quotes. Otherwise, you, if, if you leave it till December and then go for quotes again, it, it will be ready for another six months. The problem I have, so I can say something about this, is um, <clears throat> if we leave it till later, how likely are we to miss out on this uh, on this fifty pounds or fifty thousand pounds? Because the application is going to be in by the eleventh of December for a meeting in January for a decision on that. So will we miss out on that? Or is it on the hand up there, yeah. You you would miss out on any opportunity of a uh, fifty thousand pound grant. Um, that is something early December, I'm just trying to see what date it is. I think early December the submission needs to be in um, for a meeting in January. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, we're making the decision before we know what we can do. Yeah, it, it kind of goes like that sometimes with some of the projects. Yeah. I'm not happy about it at all. Does the grant, is the grant predicated on um, agreeing with, you know, a contractor? No, we have to have a sort of, when you go and contract find it, you need a figure to put on there. I couldn't have an individual human being working for you just pluck up a figure and put it on the site. It's something that you would need to agree for me to submit um, with certain criteria, uh, certain pieces of equipment, specification, etc. So um, we need to have that figure there to be able to get quotes come back in up to that value, if that makes sense. Yeah, so could we, could we do a halfway house then? Could we sort of put a request, based on the figures that we're talking about here, put a request in for the grants um, with a view to um, hopefully getting the grants and then 
um, spend the heat next year after we know how much money else will come, you know, how, how much more money will be coming, that will be coming in. The thing is, it's up until December, unfortunately, so if it's sort of submitted, we'd need to have all that in place for de uh, December. Um, well, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. Could we not put a request in saying these are the figures that we'd like to go with if we can get the grant, and then if the grant, obviously if we don't get the grant anyway, then that's another thing. But if we got the grant, then you know we would just, and then it's approved, as in the council approves that we go ahead and spend it. Then we spend it after December when we know what money is coming in. Isn't that affordability thing, though, uh, not applicable because we're spending this financial year, so we already know what we've got in terms of a preset. The affordability statements there would make sense if this was happening post 31st of March 2021, so next financial year, because then we'll understand the income for next financial year, whereas at the moment we understand the budget and the size of the money available this year, and we're trying to access grant funding to spend with this year's money. But once it goes over the boundary, it just ends up being, well, it's, it's a completely different um, situation. Because but isn't, isn't the point that John's making that some of the money that, ha yes, is in the budget that we have got already earmarked um, may need, depending on what money we don't get in towards the end of the year, we might need to use that for something else. Is that not the point that John's making? I thought, I thought that's that's what he was make, That's the point he was making. I thought he was making his initial point to people and trying to figure out what we get this year. No, um, it's linking it to the um, the amount of money that we setting process. I think. Yeah, but that's but that's for that's for next year. year. So what I'm saying is, is that that accounts for after March. And we're trying to do a project which is in this, within this financial year boundary. So we already know the precepts and the tax base for this financial year what we're in. And if we're thinking about, if this was a project in say April, or April next year, we'd have to wait because we would want, or we'd want to know those types of, um, those, those bits of information for how much budget we've got to pay with. But because this is this side of the financial year and this financial year, we already know the precept, we know the tax base, we know we know those answers. It's different if we're trying to say let's mitigate, um, you know, the council having to have a massive spend to mitigate something related to COVID-19, we don't want to happen next week, next month, or what have you. That's a different situation in my in my head. But I see this as being an, an item that has a budget, we know the tax base, we just make a decision really that this financial year or you delay way into the next financial year when you've kind of gone past um, understanding what our income is next year as well. Because we're not, we're not there yet. The decision that council made at uh, July School Council was that the project would be progressed with quotes and plans being brought back to the next school council meeting, so that's the yeah. way. If I could just say, I, I've argued many times that just because something is in the budget doesn't mean to say we've got to spend it. That's what the BBC do, things like that. If it's in the budget, they spend it. But when we're in this financial situation, COVID, we don't know what's going to happen in the future, we don't know what is going to be uh, required of us, then we mustn't just spend this in the budget, we can't just spend it, let's carry the money forward and apply for this grant uh, next year. I, I can't see that this grant for 50 grand is just going to disappear and say, well, you've had it now, and you can, we can get nothing next year. I think that's scaremongering. Just leave it, just carry it forward, wait till we see what money we've got to spend, just like a normal family would, a sensible family, they don't go into debt. And that's what we should do. Are we going into debt? I, I don't understand where you're coming from, Tom, because you don't know what South Process you're going to give us as from December. But that's the actually, next financial year. For the next uh, financial year. Yeah. That's the whole point, what I'm saying. You don't know what's going to happen next year. But we're trying to do it, we're trying to do the project within this financial year. Where, where we've got money allocated for it. Yeah. 
Yeah, but why not carry that allocated money forward to next year in case we need it for something else? So we get another surge of COVID and all our activity centres are shut down. We need some money. Yeah. What happens then? He said, oh, well, we spent it last year, sorry. But we, we had a big lockdown this year and to date it's cost us 13500 and no one knows what a few trolls told me. Well, yeah, I agree. Nobody's got a crystal ball. And Andy's got his hand up and no one's ignoring him. Is this grant actually related to COVID or is that John says something that will come around again? Okay, from, in March, you weren't eligible to apply for it. It's something that I applied for in March and we were told point blank we didn't hit the criteria. Um, now we do, only because in July you agreed to go ahead with the project and I was obviously bringing it back from the next council meeting. So when I spoke to the lady, I said that potentially we could get the project done within six months. But is it something that it is a one one bite or is it going to come back? Is it something we can apply for? It, so change, it changes as the wind. It, it, they change the criteria from each month to each month, you know. You, Covid helped us on this one. She said because of Covid, it was suddenly eligible for us. I don't understand where John's coming from because we don't know what's going to happen. And one thing for certain is there's going to be an awful lot of people out of work next year that are going to be claiming benefits. Our tax base is only going to go in one direction and that's down. So we are going to be tied to some money, that which I can understand. And if there's no guarantee that we can get this uh, grant next year as well, then maybe we need to look at actually deferring it and putting it across. What do you want to say, Ethan? I just think. How about you, Fabs? Have you got any comments on this? No, I'm listening to you guys. Um... I say like... something positive. <laughs> well, I can say it's a difficult, it's a difficult decision. So I, I see yeah. everyone's point, but I I wouldn't know. So so maybe Odil has already sorry Del has already said this. But is there any way we could uh, go ahead and then if we get the funding we do it. If we don't get the funding we don't do it. Is, is that yeah, that seems very sensible. I think that, that, that's the point I was making, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I yeah it was. Yeah. I, I think that's a totally valid point. Yeah. You know, that if, if and the only way to see whether we can get the funding is that we've got to go ahead and find out how much it's going to cost. Yeah. yeah. Like you're saying that we'll, we'll actually go ahead with it, uh, John. It's just that we... we if, if we're going to do it at all, at some point, we need to know how much it's going to cost. Yeah. And I've been in the council a long time, Tony, and as soon as you know you've got the funding, the council goes forward like a rocket. But, but we're making a proposal that we go and find out how much it's going to cost. By doing that, we can then work out whether or not we can get this grant. And then from that, we can make the decision yeah. whether or not we're going to go forward with it. Because in respect of the grant funding, it has to be submitted by December for their meeting, their yeah. grant meeting in January. Mm. So we will know by January exactly. what our tax base is going to be. We will set yeah. a precept probably at about the same time to find out whether or not we've got the grant funding. Mm -hmm. And then we can make a decision then, on whether to go ahead. Yes, yeah. or whether to delay it. Yeah. Yeah. So all, all our proposal is that this moment in time, we, we go out and get the quotes. And draft up a contract, yes. send the documentation, and for the, the, to meet the criteria of funding. And depending on what South Gossetia gives us in December, we'll know by January whether we got this extra amount of money and what we need for, you know, the situation with uh, South Coast. So that's my proposal. I agree with the chairman on this one. Is that a seconder, Michael? Yeah. So can we put that to the vote? So it's the, it's to to agree the budget of one hundred and five thousand and draft the contracts and the document 
to put on the contract finder website to then get quotes in um, to include the listed equipment to meet the criteria of the funding provider and, and no final decision is made. And no final decision, decision can go ahead yeah. until we know yeah. what, what the financial situation is in the new year. Yeah. So we've got a proposal in a second, though. No, before you go on, can I come in, please? Yes, sorry. Yeah, I think that we should rather amend the proposal. Instead of agreeing on the budget, we should rather go for the courts without agreeing on budget at this stage. If we get the courts and know how much it's going to cost, then we can proceed with that. If we can afford that, then uh, we will do it. If we can't, we will uh, postpone it to the next budget reading. So I will run up, change the proposal, and then rephrase it and take agreeing agree on the cost of hundred and something amount pound. I think we should tweak it a bit in order to agree on what John is saying, and then also going for the court. But if we agree on the cost now, whatever amount that we are going to pay, definitely it might be within that. But we might end up utilizing this funding. Should anything happen next year, we will be able to uh, commit ourselves in any good shape as a council. So we should rather tweak the proposal. That's my view on that. As far as I understand it, to go to be able to put something on the contract finder's website, we have to have the need to figure. Yeah. Because if you just put to design a play area for us, potentially you it could be 10,000, it could spot. be 200,000, so I think that's, is that right there? Yeah, yeah we need to have some ballpark figure, we can take specification, individual equipment of, we can alter all sorts of things, but we do need to have, and I can't make that decision, I am just an implementer of your decision, um, it would need to be a, a drawn up not contract with that end document highlighting specification and a ballpark figure. When we get the quotes come back in, they might be less, they might be more. I can't obviously, they, they can't be more because we've got a figure. Uh, but it gives people the opportunity to quote against that figure with the specification. I think Tom's got Sorry, Tom, you want to say something? No, I can give you any. Tom, did you want to say something? I agree yeah. with the language of the discussion. So, it was 105,000 to get quotes and to make a final decision once the financial position is clear in the year. Yeah. 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 the grant. And, yeah, we know about the grant position, yeah. Isn't it really an assessment of risk against what we it, it see is, is COVID causing? It's it's subject to COVID, subject to the grant, and then the mechanism what do we go ahead? What's been a how much it's gonna cost? There's no final no, thing to say that we're gonna flag with it. No. You know, to alleviate your fears, John. It's just that all we're doing we're finding out how much is it gonna cost, we have to do that procedure to find out and whether we can get a grant mm. and we make the decision whether we go ahead once we know what it's looking like in the new year okay so i think we've got a proposal and a second yes can we have a vote on the future just go ahead and find out which is going to cost um those in favor not in favor Five, six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, eight, four, ten, and over. Okay. Abstention. <laughs> what a job. <laughs> Thank you, John. Right, let's move on. Right, the uh, 7.23 um, to installation and replacement of missing bus shelter uh, in West Woods and the refurbishment of existing bus, bus shelters. Was this the bus shelter that there was no bus going on? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's like a line for that. It says, 
And if the redundant bus charter on Wordswood Road should be removed. Oh, it's good that it's obvious. No, the one on the other side of the road. Oh, the other side of the road. Which is there, but actually it's not on the bus route. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, well. Yeah. So, do we say, do we just leave it or do we say we're going to take it away? Well, going back to, so obviously he did agree that we would purchase a bus shelter. So We've you got. you need to firstly decide whether you want to put the bus shelter that you agreed to purchase to replace one of our existing ones, which could do with replacement, or whether you just want to say, no, we'll leave it for now. Um, and then also to find out if you can, if you're happy for us to take down the redundant bus shelter, which hasn't been used for many years. Is there any bus shelter? Sorry, question. Is there any bus shelters that we desperately need to replace? I think that we might be able to answer you on that one. Um, there are various bus shelters that need replacing, but I think each individual council within the ward would probably have a stronger. Um, case on knowing which ones would be more suitable. There are a couple on um Bradley Street, not Bradley Street Way, um Bailey Court Road that are pretty old. Um and other parts of Webswood Road, they're quite aged as well. I I have no suggestion as to which one, but the lots of them could do with being replaced, but obviously if you want to save money then there's an opportunity. I think we should leave it quite frankly. Yeah, I agree with that actually. There's no point, you know, unless we've got some that we can clearly identify as being absolutely yeah. dilapidated and, you know, possibly dangerous, I yeah. think we should just, in light of the discussions that we were having earlier, I think we should just um, yeah. Yeah. get rid of the one on uh, Webswood Road because there's never going to be a bus going down there. So get rid of that. And then just defer the replacement until we're a bit more sure about our financial position. I'll second that, Sean. Yeah. Terry. So um, we have a proposal by Terry to um, cancel any bus shelters at the present. We've, we've, somebody, sorry, you want to say something there, Andy? I just remember that uh, we were going to actually renovate some of the bus shelters and it was a project to. Some new yeah, this has been a working progress because of COVID. First sex screens have been um, increased, obviously, with uh, workplaces, schools. So it's been really, really difficult to get hold of replacement first sex. And at the moment, we can't get hold of any that would be suitable for the bus shelters. Mm -hmm. The ones um, by Bailey's Court uh, Centre. Uh, have been then uh, graffitied rather too well, I think. Mm -hmm. That perhaps is one that needs to be looked at. Can we uh, get that graffiti off? Is there a we, do, we do get it off regularly. Well, it it's we been there since I moved three years ago. We, have, we do remove as much as we can as it arrives, but yeah, uh, we will remove it again. Yeah. Yeah. The longer it's on, the harder it's to take off. Yeah. I think that might need some tidifying, even if it's just a question of taking out the existing plastic screen and putting a new plastic screen that, that's rather what than doing the whole shelter. Yeah, that's what they would be saying at the moment. We can't get rid of the plastic. plastic because of all the COVID mm -hmm. screens yeah. and everything. So. And also, um, because I've got nothing better to do, I took some photos of some really, really dilapidated. Um, Road signs, uh, a couple actually quite dangerous on Webswood Road and Bailey's Court Road, etc. I was doing a walk and I thought I'll take a picture of this. And it's uh, street care that you have to raise that with, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're best yeah. signs. Okay, and can I, Sharon, can I just go directly to them or do I have to go through you? No, you can go directly to them, yeah. Okay, will do. If you don't get anywhere, come back to me and I'll try as well. Use the report it link, Terry. Say again, sorry? Use the report it link. Oh, okay, we'll do it. Thanks. But actually, at the moment, or it was at the beginning of the week, the report it link, when you try to, when you try to go into to the bit where you would report signs, it takes you through to the pothole link, which is just the bit where you have to I have pointed it out to them several times because there's a road surface reported, which is potholes, and then there's like, and 
a bit for other bits of highway, mm. but they're both linked to the same potholes bit at the moment. So, mm. but yeah. Okay. okay. Fine. Fine. Let's move back to the bus shelter scenario. So we remove, remove the redundant one on Wedgwood Road and delay replace placement of existing bus shelters. Well, actually, sorry, sorry, Sharon, because I, I did say that in the beginning, didn't I? But I think maybe in lieu, of, in in view of the sorry of the finances it's not actually causing any issue is it so should we delay that removal of that as well because that's going to cost yeah. more isn't it yeah exactly but, uh, we can, we, we, i think we can remove it ourselves can't we now didn't we remove the um the swimming brain value oh, yeah okay if it's not going to cost any more money then that i think yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, just the case of yeah disassembly yeah. and yeah. I, mean, no, 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 I think right. leaving it there while it makes the council look stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, in some respect. Um, so if, for the post for my second And yeah. if there's anything we can salvage from that existing bus shelter, maybe we can put it to better use in one of the others. You know, like. Well, it's a good idea, yeah. In all yeah. respects, panel, maybe. Mm. Yeah, actually, that's quite. That might. Yeah, if, if the pretty respects panels are okay, we might be able to re utilize them. One of the yeah. other ones in the yeah. as well. Right then. Um, so that's proposed by Terry and seconded by Michael. So we have a vote on that then in, in favour? Yeah. 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 Six, six, seven. Seven. And have you got your hand up? Yeah. Eight. Franklin? Yeah, he's got his hand up. Nine. Terry? Yes, because you proposed, yeah. That's unanimous. Where's the gun gone? I think he, he, he joined on Zoom because he had to leave during the meeting. That's oh. why he wasn't in the meeting. Oh, yeah. um, um, any engaged? No, unanimous. Okay, no attention to that. So, let's move in to 7.24. In station of split panels and other producing products on Bradford State Tank Council sites. Um, mm -hmm. Did you want to come back in on this one, Dale? Yes, I managed to compile quite a comprehensive um, report on this. I'm not going to bore you with just reading through it because it is quite um, intricate in part and it's not something that I would honestly say is my fault date. It's going to help getting this out. Um, the quotes that you have reflect various companies. I've still got to speak to a local company that recently installed um, solar panels on a local community centre. Uh, mm. My understanding is their prices are much cheaper and I mean obviously I need to give you the information that you're asking to get and this is me yeah. presenting you the information. Uh, I would recommend that we wait until I've managed to contact the local company who will actually attend the site in person. So that, that we can defer that till the next meeting yeah, and carry, yeah, over. carry yeah. over. Yeah. 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 Andy? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I found interesting was obviously later on in the agenda we're looking at replacing the roof of Bailey's Court. And one of the uh, companies that was offering solar panels had uh, roofing tiles. That oh, original were roofing tiles, yeah. I wonder whether it was worth any looking at that. Instead of replacing the roof with ordinary roofing tiles, we've got about six steel grand, replacing it with photovoltaic tiles. Yeah. It does, it, you've got two jobs in one. Yeah. Yeah, this is something I did look into, but a, a bespoke um, product was quite expensive, but it was something that I did get a quote back in from one company. Um, but the others with COVID just all went to ground, so it's something I should look at. Yeah, go on then, Dan. Fine. Sorry, Andy. You, you, got, you got cut off there, Andy, what you said. I just said it would be worth looking at. From memory, the quote for the, the panels, the bespoke panels, was about 60 grand, and one of the quotes we got for a base in the whole roof is about 60 grand. Yeah. yeah, I agree, Andy. Yeah, it's uh, worthwhile looking into, so we'll, we'll, Del, Del will, will be on that. Mm -hmm. um, so, moving on to 7.4, 
proposed amendment to standing order 42 to change the allocation of members on each committee. Right, I haven't heard anything back from Council Harbour, so that will just carry over. Okay, we'll carry that over. Item 8, to receive the minutes of the Finance Committee meeting order on the 19th of August and to deal with matters for the Council not covered elsewhere on the agenda. Uh, just to receive those. So to receive the minutes, you've received those. Um, 8.1 is installation of permanent pickleball court line markings at the Jubilee Centre. The, um, so the pickleball um, group were going to go away and get some prizes, but they haven't come back to me yet, so that will just okay. carry over. That's okay. carry over yeah. um, item 9.1 is to receive the minutes of the plane. The meeting on the 22nd of July and the 20th of August. Do you receive those? Yeah, yes, I do. Um, 10 to receive the minutes of the Leather Use and Amenities Committee, 7th and 17th of August. Do you receive them? Yes, I receive them. Okay, so number 11, updates from South Gloucestershire Ward members relevant to Bradley State. Would you like to take that one off, Roger? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, nothing uh, uh, apart from last time's uh, scout and uh, the traffic lights at the wounded. I have had somebody complaining about um, a tree uh, invading their property in uh, uh, Meadowbrook Road. Uh, and I also had um, a letter from somebody from a Pakistani wanting me to um, take issue with the Pakistani High Commission because uh, his particular sect of Muslims, the Yulanis, were being persecuted in Pakistan through some great order. Uh, I think, well, yeah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, um, to speak to Jack McCrasty. Uh, he's a poor boy. Yeah, just the question of the uh, traffic lights and the work is. Yeah. Because we're getting new traffic lights and we haven't had it run well, that is about to break up the traffic to a certain extent. Which will make it yeah, easier to get out from what this is. Between you and I, in any event, it's pretty unaffordable anyway, because they want to be 250,000, 70,000 for a second. <coughs> but I've asked, uh, asked uh, the road traffic engineers are there any cheaper alternatives that could be used to slow that traffic down? It's coming over that brow from Robert Roundabout, uh, approaching the Worthies. And I do appreciate the problem, especially if uh, you know, the increase in traffic is quite a lot of work. Uh, so you so the tree invading property, what road? Meadow, Meadow Brook, Meadow, yeah. Was, was that from uh, Meadow Road, sorry, yeah. Was that from the chap called Lee Bushby? I can't remember the name of that. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know Lee Bushby's got the show. It's, it's, uh, it's oh, moved there, uh, conservatory. Um, it's, uh, Oh, okay. There's a problem about ownership of a tree. Uh, <laughs> the council, the council deny ownership of it. Yeah. The council deny there's any tree protection orders on any of the trees in that road. Um, and suggested they write to Gloucester, uh, place in Gloucester, uh, and to, to establish ownership of uh, yeah. Land registers? Yeah. I think it was, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Any comment? Anyway, um, uh, anyway okay, yeah. so that's uh, Roger's report. Anything from you, Franklin? Is yeah. there any? I think I have one on the DVRY funding, which I did send to Sharon this afternoon for them to review. Hopefully, we could get some money from that uh, source as well. So, the area wide funding, yes, I passed that on to Graham, so I think there might be some projects that. Source funding. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, on, and on that one, uh, uh, well, Sean Franklin, is there any further progress with the widening of the cycle path by the just down from the surgery? Unfortunately, I haven't been given any updates yet. That's why I'm unable to update on that. But we are still waiting for the road officers to update us on that. As soon as I get that, I will forward it to uh, Sean. Okay, if, if there's any chance of just pushing that a bit, because this, I mean, I know you've only attacked it for a short while, but it's been, that particular area has been going on for years. 
Um, but okay. Thanks for that, very good. Keith? Uh, thanks, Tony. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I'm sure other members probably share the concern of the um, absolute lockdown that this area is suffering with road closures and oh, yeah. uh, phenomenal sums of money that street care and WECA are just sort of chucking about at the moment. And before they even finish jobs, they announce that there's going to be further traffic lights going in. Yeah. Uh, we've suffered all the problems on Brookway and Orpheus and Brayton Avenue, all badly signposted, traffic all going down to the junction, and then finding that the road is still closed and having to trundle back up. This is costing a lot of money to people's time, their fuel, everything else, going all the way around the houses. And, you know, are we actually benefiting from any of this? We're alienating all the public. And, you know, people are getting absolutely incensed. And I know I am as well. And I'm sure, Roger, you've said the same, haven't you? Absolutely. And uh, I don't know if you saw my comments uh, the tone inclusion of my roundabout in, uh, in one of our elections uh, manifestos. I said, well, don't put my name on it. Uh, it's a very fast, basically. Yeah. And uh, he came back and said, well, he says you're not actually um, advocating it. Just um, noting it. You know? I said, well, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Well, I stood. I joined in one. I stood recently at the narrowings that have been put in at the railway arch at Parkway with Tim Bowles and our researcher and we watched numerous lines of cars going through there on red lights. And not only that, these electric scooters now as well, which is a big problem. I was at the Willowbrook and nearly got hit on my feet off by one of those. You can't even hear them. And here we are now, Weka Mayor, signing up to some agreement whereby, you know, we're going to be allowing these things, you know, to be used. Now the police are, you know, they're, they're all over the place on this. They don't even know what the law is on it. They're set, they interviewed a guy to do with the electric scooters on the, on the radio this morning. And he reckons that he tells all these people that, you know, they can't officially use them on the highway. But we've got kids going around this area, and they're they're just everywhere. Yeah. I, Correct me I, if I'm wrong. A pedestrian footpath should be for pedestrians. Yes, I certainly think there's a number of uh, adults and teenagers on ordinary pedal bikes you see. It would be quite ridiculous. Yeah. The new cycle paths in. I, I understand as well, Tony, there was an accident at the Willowbrook involving one of these electric scooters and the windscreens of the vehicles were damaged. Yes, it was also about a month ago there was a shooting as well at the Oak Tree Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the police attended about five times in one day. That's it's right. not a problem that at uh, this level, of course, one wonders if they have an accident damage the car. Who pays the insurance? Yeah. 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 Arctics or delivery lorries using Orpheus and Brook Way. He wants them all to go round the Bradley Stoke Way to the Willowbrook, Aldi, all the rest of it, and avoid using that stretch of road. Well, I'm going back 20 years when I was on Barnet, um, I had a village in my walk. We actually packed to get all heavy vehicles back in there. By the installation of weight restriction. I don't know if that's going to be the price I've lost. It needs to be, well, at least it's cost money to put it in. Well, 
So yeah, you do not have a financial background, so Andy, I don't know. Uh, you don't need it. It's, yeah. it's not that onerous, it's just to... Uh, yeah, I, I think bank yeah, reconciliation it's, 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 scared me off. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, um, it's not that onerous, uh, Fab, if you'd like to have a crack at that. You don't have to do it. No, yeah. just up to you. Yeah. I, I, I'll pass this time, but thanks anyway, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, first of all, could you just do the same thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 12.1 we're voting on. Then it's proposed and uh, all second. Second. Yeah. second. So, who's in favour of the. Uh, so, this is to accept the scope of yeah, the scope audit. Yeah, the scope of the audit. It looks like you know us. Yeah, okay, favour. Yeah, thank you. Um, right, and then the next one was 12.11, which was to appoint two councillors for the annual governance inspection in February. Um, um, well, anybody, I think we'd like to continue with it. Anybody else want to do it? If not, I would put my hand up if nobody else wants to do it. No volunteers? Like it's <laughs> me then. Ben and myself. I, I, I did do it um, last year before. 
Um, okay, so those in favour? Sorry, I will propose myself. Something else to propose to I'll propose the chairman. Yeah. Um, and then Tony Ben. Ben, you yourself. Yeah. 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 seconder. And as he's got his hand up, you know who speaks? Franklin. Yeah. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. Oh, you're second there. Well done. Thank you, Franklin. So who's in favour? I am. Oh, Right, okay, let's talk about one um, Right, talk about two. Request from the Boys Owls After School Folk Holiday Club for temporary rent reduction. We did this at Finance, didn't we? Right, well, if you remember, we had a request at Finance for Abacus Preschool who asked for a rent reduction. So we've now had um, one come in from Wise Owls After School Club. Um, so you have the paperwork in your agenda pack. Um, Terry can talk through about the, the financial information. Yeah. 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 And I'm still looking for the reduction. Did we Who is that? Who is that? 
Losers, bitte. Second, uh, I think the ballet was only asking for 25 percent. Is that clear to everybody? Well, they, were, they were asking for 25 percent for the um, as long as the uh, COVID carries on. Mm -hmm. ah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, sir. Uh, okay. So uh, let's have the vote on. We've proposed in 
uh, in favour of Andy. Uh, I've been in favour. Terry's gone. Oh, Babs in favour. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right then. So, to next one is 12 5 to approve the bills and direct debit payments. You have that in your agenda pack? Yep. Yeah. So that 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 is so the the one so the two oh seven six eighty eight one is all sites ground maintenance February twenty, which was a missing invoice. And then the next one, the maintenance of Brunswick Roundabout 20, February 20, was the invoice of the £208 off. Yeah, we see what we're doing. 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 Yeah, we see what we're doing.
Um, that, didn't you? Sorry? You agreed? Well, no, I, I mentioned it at strategic oh, planning, but it will be coming up tonight. Um, and then you will also need to set the date for 2021 to display so that we can transfer the deposit across. So the two dates suggested by the firework company are the 31st of October Too early. or the 7th of November. Too early. <laughs> <laughs> On research, yeah. Remembrance Sunday, because I did think that would actually be Remembrance Sunday, but I found out a bit of information which I didn't know, that Remembrance Sunday is always the 2nd Sunday Seven, in November, always. which in 2021 will be the 14th of November, so the 7th of November would be the ideal date, yeah. I think, mm -hmm. really. Yeah, it's near, isn't it? Two days after Bob Monday. Yeah. Andy, we'd like to say something then. I'll make it the 7th. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Okay, I want to read from that. It's funny why we talk about it. And I don't let's move on. I don't let's let's move on. I have to go back and look at council minutes and recollection. I thought, you're, that's, that's, that's quite an accusation, Tom. If it's fact, I will go back and look at the previous minutes and I want to. Yeah, otherwise, uh, Sharon can actually advise on it as a proper officer. She, if she wants to say something, yeah, I would like to listen to it. Well, she doesn't need to say anything on this particular matter. You've admitted yourself in this meeting it was fine, so let's move on. Anyway, it was 2019, and Tom's referring to the fact that, that I must admit there was quite a big council discussion in the past. Yeah. The um, uh, the income from Jimmy Kroll's fair went to Mayor's charities, but in 2019, I think it was, was it or even 18, one of the years, the money actually went came back to the town council as income, as opposed to being given to the Mayor's charity. So. <laughs> it's irrelevant this year because it's all been cancelled. So let's move on. Um, right, next. Because I'm not sure that. Still on the yeah. We need a proposal and a seconder to give the 314625 to the Mayor's Charity, transfer the deposit to next year and set the date for next year. So we've heard the proposal. Can we have somebody to propose it? And um, yeah. second it. And Michael proposed. Um, and a second. Andy's got his hand up. I think Keith. Or Keith, one of the yeah. two. Yeah. So those, those, um, those in favour? I'm going to have to abstain. Yeah. One, two, yeah. three, four, five, six in favour. Six in favour. Those against? Oh, I will stay. And those abstaining is Tom, and I obviously have to abstain. No, I'm abstaining too. Oh, it's really abstaining. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm not doing so. That's been carried. Right, next. You were you were in favour of it. I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm not having a, an accusation like that. That's oh, right. uh, check it out and then report it to standards. Uh, um, right, where are we? Um, Right, 13.2. Uh, recommendations from the 2020 Strategic Planning Meeting, Youth Funding Budgets, Clarity and Transparency. Right, so you have the uh, information from the um, Strategic Planning Meeting in your agenda pack. So the first one is the Youth Funding Budgets, Clarity and Transparency. So the recommendation at strategic planning was that councils recommend to full council that BSTC set up a completely separate youth annex as an attachment to the five-year forward plan to give a clearer picture and easier reference points linked to youth income and expenditure budgets. Okay. Do you need a proposal and a secondary? Michael, Roger. Yep. Yeah. Who's in favour? Please. Yeah, you, Manimus, and Miss Tom. So he's gone again. No, he's in favour. Yeah, so that's you, Manimus. Yeah, no, he's Thank you. Yeah, right. Thank you, Tom. Um, so the 13.22 is the redevelopment of the Bookway Activity Centre main building. Okay, so discussion took place on the possibility of various redevelopment ideas to increase the usage at Bookway Activity Centre, which could potentially include the provision of a community cafe, new kitchen, brick-built storage solution, which could be utilised by the town council and scouts. So the recommendation from strategic planning is that BSTC explores the redevelopment possibilities of the main Brookway Activity Centre building. <clears throat> I think we need to add uh, and to look at the possibilities of a, of a loan from uh, 
Sometimes the planning meeting gets put in on the back of finance and things like this. If we can avoid doing that. I mean, the only reason that we move meetings around generally is because we don't clash with South Wales School Council and their meetings yeah. are on a Wednesday evening. So then the ones that, that where you, as you say, where you have like finance and planning in one night, um, that's normally when we have to move it either for the Christmas is the main one, obviously nobody mm. wants to meet between Christmas and New Year. Um, and also then we change them sometimes if South Gloss have committee meetings. Unless we could sorry Michael. If we don't have working with South Gloss show, then we'll have to move on Wednesday so that we're considering having all our meetings on a Tuesday. But that impacts on okay. quite a lot of other parish and uh, yeah, like yeah, it does. all peace meetings with so this of Tuesdays, I think. They are. Yeah. 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 So, and I'm he's on another time. Well, so that's why they're always on Wednesday. Yes, but there's more than one Tuesday in a month that should be possible with goodwill to work around that problem. But also, Sharon, we've got to consider things like I know we don't have a lot of them, but the community engagement forum meetings. Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there is a lot of other stuff which goes on, which is why they've always been on Wednesday. Yeah. Mm. So, um, also on Mondays now, we, we, we're often having conservative group meetings, which are South Gloss meetings every two weeks on a Monday, yeah. which uh, can slightly impinge on, on the leisure use communities, but it needs a rush. But, uh, I would I would ever uh, get uh, swapping to any other day apart from Wednesday, to be honest, but perhaps you look at moving. What's wrong with Thursday? I don't know. That's either boring all day, isn't it? It's not seven boring days in every week. But, it, but it's more about having the two, rather than uh, which evening the meeting is, it's more about having two meetings in one week, isn't it? 
Well, so potentially you could look at perhaps moving leisure use to the first Wednesday of the month rather than... Well, sometimes I bet three or four in a week. Yeah. yeah. So that, that <laughs> we'll be there. Yes, we do, Roger. Yeah. Oh, I got him four. Yeah. I got him four, Paul. Four days a week sometimes. Yeah. Is it not change for change's sake? It's kind of evolved to the stage where it does actually work. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. Things around, it's going to clash with other other things. We, there, there'll always be something that will clash, but you, you know we've got the ability to send apologies, haven't we? We've all kind of arranged ourselves and our commitments around the existing dates and days anyway. So then you've got to go back and start changing the other things. It, it mm. doesn't necessarily make sense to change it, really. Yeah. I know that this that we did have. I mean, it's been on the Wednesday. I've been here nearly eleven years. They've always been on the Wednesday. I guess they probably were even before that time. And when we were trying to find an evening to have leisure use and amenities, it was very difficult. That's why it ends up on the Monday, the same week that this right. is finance. And, and also on some occasions, I mean, you know, depending on whether or not we're going to see a vast influx of. Uh, Planning applications, we could do it by round robin. Well, no, you can't do planning applications by round robin. That's not suitable. Um, and you have to actually have a, a discussion. You can't do it by email. Um, I, I don't think the uh, discussion is necessary about changing the day. I think it's just the question of two meetings in the one week. Yeah. Because right. as you say, we've all we've kept these dates for a considerable amount of years, and they do tend to work. It's just that I can see obviously the 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 two meetings in one week, the finance and using two quite big meetings. Yeah, different, it would be different if it was planning. Well, planning one one of the other two. Years and years and years ago, mm -hmm. when we gone past twelve o'clock yeah. at night, yeah, yeah. So much. yeah. yeah. Four hours. Mm -hmm. Four hours. Yeah. So these today the meeting should be well a lot easier. I don't know. Mm. So what do you want to do with this one? Mm -hmm. well, I we personally would suggest that uh, where you've got the two meetings in one week, you change for example you've got use and measure and finance, but both two heavy meetings. If you're going to have two in one week, put planning in exchange for one of those two, because planning's quite a short one. Mm. Yeah. It's how well, well, it can be long, you know. Yeah, it does depend on them, but it's not normally as long as the time as the is it? In general, they're not generally long. Perhaps, yeah, perhaps you could consider to have time on the board and you move planning to the third and keep that in the week for a yeah. That that way not supporting the idea if you're gonna have the two in the one week. That's my suggestion. Well it's only that you give the mean to some finance in that week, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. what we're saying is for yeah. those two two are the heavy meeting. Yeah, but they're not, not the same to clientele on all on all meetings, are they? No, there aren't. All councils are on different I'm only on one. Time. John's only on one because South Lost Airs and other things to do. Um, so there are people just on the one. Ben likes to go on all three, by the way. He likes to come. Yeah, well, I can't like to do all, all, all of them, but um, mm. so that's why it was my suggestion that just because planning is. Yeah, you know, not just get out of planning, you know, because you know, there's yeah. time scale sort of thing, yeah. you know, for getting in the, your responses. Mm. So the set their time scale. I agree, I am, I am. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So have we got any proposals? No, neither do you. Yeah, I can say as is. I, I have a feeling we did, had this discussion once before and we came to exactly the same conclusion. Yeah, yeah. we did. We yeah, absolutely right and it. it can be difficult, but I think mean, uh, it's still worth it. If it ain't broke, don't try and fix. Yeah. 
I propose that or second that if that's a proposal to Keith. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Smiling. Okay. Thank you very much, Councillor. On that one. You don't know anything. That's a problem. <laughs> no. Thank you, Tom. Right. Um, so you confirm the dates are as per the our list on our agenda pack. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you, Tony. Thank, thank you all. Thank you.